Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss Video, and have you ever wondered why there is a Kansas City in Missouri? Well, the city started as a boat dock on the Kansas River, which was named after a Native American tribe. The state of Kansas, along with the other Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas, is pretty much right next door, but they were both incorporated later. Anyway, that's the first of many U.S. city name origins I am going to share with you in this video today, brought to you by our friends at Geico. Go. New York City was originally the capital of the New Netherland colony, so it was appropriately called New Amsterdam. But then in the 17th century, the English took New Netherland from the Dutch and decided to name it after the Duke of York. So the colony became New York and the capital, New York City. Thousands of years before Memphis, Tennessee, there was Memphis, Egypt, which was named after a pyramid where a sixth dynasty king was buried. Memphis is actually a Greek interpretation of the actual Egyptian name. Anyway, Memphis, Tennessee also has a pyramid. It's gigantic, and it's home to the world's largest Bass Pro Shop megastore. Atlanta, Georgia got its name in 1845 after the Western and Atlantic Railroad. The city was originally called Terminus because it was the final stop on that line, but a railroad engineer suggested Atlanta because, you know, Terminus is a terrible place name. Hey, so where are you from? I'm from the Terminus. Omaha, Nebraska is named after a Native American tribe, the Omaha. The word possibly means dwellers on the bluff, and the city was founded in 1854 after a treaty with the tribe. Miami was also named after a tribe, the Miami, who lived in South Florida up until about the 18th century. And speaking of Miami, the Algonquin tribe used to speak a language called Miami, Illinois. That's how the state got its name, and the city of Chicago in Illinois gets its name from their word for wild garlic, although they've Frenchified the pronunciation a bit. Los Angeles used to have a much longer name, meaning Town of Our Lady, the Queen of Angels of the Little Portion. It was named that by the Spanish in the 18th century, who know a thing or two about long names, but nowadays it's just Los Angeles, the Angels. The Little Portion, by the way, was a reference to the small land area of Los Angeles. San Jose, California is also a shortened version of a once longer label, El Pueblo de San Jose de Guadalupe, meaning the Town of St. Joseph of Guadalupe. There are a few stories about how the city of Newark, New Jersey got its name. It might have been named the New Ark of the Covenant, or New Ark for short, but that seems impossible. I mean, nothing against the great city of Newark, but I don't think anyone's ever been there and thought, well, this is the New Ark of the Covenant. Another possibility is that it was originally New Wark, as in New Work, or it was named after a town in England. Boston was definitely named after a place in England. In the county of Lincolnshire, there is a small town called Boston. They've even got their own football team currently playing in the sixth tier of English football. Anchorage was colonized by Russian explorers as early as 1784, but it got its current name in 1920 from the U.S. Postal Department. There was a hardware and clothing store called Anchorage in the town, which it was then named after. Interestingly, citizens later voted for it to be called Alaska City, but the government refused to change it. Tulsa, Oklahoma has a similar name origin to the city of Tallahassee, Florida. The word, sometimes spelled Tallahassee, is a creature. Indian term for Old Town. Tulsa is basically a contraction. Minneapolis basically translates to water city. Ni is a Dakota Sioux word for water. Polis is city in Greek, and a teacher chose the name in 1852. Philadelphia has Greek origins. You've probably heard it called the city of brotherly love, and that's basically what it translates to. Love is filio in Greek, and brother is Adelphos. Baltimore is named after a former proprietary governor of the province of Maryland, Cecil Calvert, second Lord Baltimore. Baltimore. He was in office from 1632 to 1675, and he was otherwise totally unremarkable. More evidence that the key to getting something named after you is just to be on the ground floor. That's why I've always said Tim Berners-Lee made a huge error by not calling the World Wide Web the Tim Berners-Lee communication strategy. Cleveland was also named after a person, General Moses Cleveland, with two A's. No one knows exactly why they dropped the first A. General Cleveland worked for and was a major investor in the Connecticut land company, which settled in modern-day Cleveland around 1796. Nashville, Tennessee is another city named after a general. Francis Nash fought in the American Revolutionary War, and multiple cities in the U.S. are named after him. Nashville was originally called Nash Borough until 1784. If all this general talk has made you worried that General Andrew Jackson doesn't have his own city, don't worry, he does. 
That would be Jacksonville, Florida. He was the first military governor of Florida, but he never actually spent any time in Jacksonville. And who can blame him? said the kid who grew up in Orlando. New Orleans was originally named by French settlers, so it was Nouvelle Orleans at first, and they called it that after Philippe II, the Duke of Orleans. Speaking of cities named after royalty, Charlotte, North Carolina honors Queen Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz who was married to King George III. The city is in Mecklenburg County. It was founded in 1768 and has the nickname the Queen City. Settler Daryl Dupa gave Phoenix, Arizona its name. He thought it was perfect because the settlement used to be the home of Native Americans, so he thought of Phoenix for the the rising from the ashes metaphor. But just to be clear, those ashes were created by settlers like Daryl Dupa. Anyway, before that, it was called Pumpkinville. Really. Honolulu might be the oldest place name on our list. Indigenous people of Hawaii gave the area that title at least 2,000 years ago. It means sheltered bay or protected bay. Detroit means straight in French, at least if you don't pronounce the last T, a reference to the nearby Lake Erie and Lake Huron, which are connected by a strait. Portland, Oregon was the result of a coin flip in 1845. Two settlers couldn't agree on a name. One wanted to call it Boston, the other wanted to call it Portland after the city in his home state of Maine. So they flipped flipped a penny, and Portland won two out of three. I'm imagining that Boston won the first coin flip, and then the savvy Portland fan was like, let's do two out of three. I think we said two out of three before we started this, actually. We definitely did. Yeah, it's two out of three. And then Portland comes from behind, and now they have the Timbers. San Diego was probably named around 1602 by explorer Sebastian Vizcano. Diego de Alcala was a saint who worked on missions in the Canary Islands, and Vizcano's ship had that name as well. And San Francisco used to be Yerba Buena when it was a smaller bayside settlement of 200 people, but then eventually in the 1840s, more and more people started showing up, you know, the gold rush and everything. And then the mayor, Lieutenant Bartlett, decreed the land to be San Francisco. In Spanish, Las Vegas means the meadows, and the area was named around 1829 by Rafael Rivera, a scout for an expedition. Apparently, back then, the area was full of springs and meadows rather than casinos. I have been to Las Vegas. I have spent several days there, and I can tell you that I have never been in a location that reminded me me less of a meadow in my entire life. Louisville, Kentucky has French roots, and it was named after King Louis XVI. The founder was Colonel George Rogers Clark, who settled a group of men there around 1778, and there's even a statue of King Louis in Louisville, which was a gift from its sister city, Montpellier, France. Scottish General George Forbes named Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania after William Pitt the Elder, and Pittsburgh has an H on the end because Forbes was Scottish. In 1891, the U.S. Board on Geo graphic names made a few rules, including that cities ending in Berg with an H had to drop that H. Pittsburgh representatives complained for two decades until in 1911, the board reversed its decision and put the H back in Pittsburgh. Just in case you were wondering if government bureaucracy is new in America. It's not. James W. Denver was a governor of the Kansas Territory, but when William H. Larimer was choosing a name for a Colorado city in 1858, he went with Denver. It's believed that Larimer was doing this to try to get a political favor. What he did not realize is that Denver had already resigned from his position. Washington, D.C. was named after President George Washington while he was still in office in 1791. It was decided by town commissioners. They went with the city of Washington in the territory of Columbia after Christopher Columbus. In 1871, that territory became a district just because the word territory had fallen out of popularity. Sacramento, California got its name from the Sacramento River, which was named by Gabriel Moraga, a Spanish explorer. In 1808, he was working with Catholic missions, and so he named the river after the Holy Sacrament, aka the Eucharist. It's basically Body of Gado, or maybe it's just the process through which bread becomes Body of Gado? complicated. Speaking of state capitals, Columbus, Ohio was named after Christopher Columbus. Around 1812, state legislator Joseph Foose suggested Columbus, and it was up against Ohio City in a vote. And then allegedly, he got a group of legislators drunk to convince them to vote Columbus. Let's finish up with some Texas cities quickly, since there are a lot of them. A Spanish exploration arrived at San Antonio on the feast day of St. Anthony of Padua, so they chose him as the namesake for their settlement. Austin is named after Stephen F. Austin, who's known as the founder 
governor of Texas, although that's a problematic term. Houston is also named after a person, Sam Houston, who was a military leader in the Texas Revolution against Mexico. You will be surprised to learn that Fort Worth also has a military history. A fort was named in honor of General William Worth after he died in 1849. He had also served in the Mexican War. And finally, I return to my salon to tell you that we do not know which Dallas the Texas city is named after. Some options are James K. Polk's vice president, George Mifflin Dallas, or U.S. Navy commander, Alexander J. Dallas, or it could have been an entirely different Dallas. Thanks for watching Metal Floss Video, which is made with the help of all of these nice people and made possible by our friends at Geico. Let me know in comments the etymology of your hometown's name, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget to be awesome.